Grace, mercy, and peace, these are the gifts that are yours from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. From eternity, the concept of family has existed. As we confess in our creed, Jesus the Son was begotten of the Father, begotten, not made. Son, Father, family. And so when God created the heavens and the earth, all that was in the earth, it made sense that he would create and procreate with the concept of family in mind. The Lord says, it is not good for man to be alone. I will create for him and provide for him a suitable companion, a helper, a mate. And so man was given woman, and the two of them were family together. And then this man and woman were given a command by the Lord to be fruitful and multiply. Have babies, have children. This is the Lord's design for our earthly relationships. That we would be joined and unified together by blood and by law. We belong to each other. We are joined to each other. We have families. Of course, it did not take long for us, that is, for man, to screw up God's design. Genesis chapter 3 shows us the fall of man, that in the, in the fall of man, the victory of Satan, that Satan has broken apart and disrupted all that God has beautifully put together. The fall of man is not only about the eating of fruit and original sin, but it is about the breaking up, the shattering of the bliss of Eden that we just sang about. The thief, Satan himself, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And the fall of man has been the fall and destruction of the family ever since. Think about this. As seemingly insignificant and harmless as the eating of fruit might seem, look at the damage that is done in just one generation of humanity. Look how Cain and Abel, the, the sons of Adam and Eve, show the harmful effects of a house divided. In one generation, we go from eating the forbidden fruit to murdering. One brother kills over jealousy and selfish pride, asking God, am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is yes. Yes, we are. We are given responsibility to care for those whom God has called us to be in family with. We are given the command to honor our father and our mother and to care for our sons and our daughters. Indeed, to look out for and love our brothers and sisters. But Satan, being the strong man, at least in terms of this world, has sought to divide our homes, to destroy our love and care for one another, and to turn us against one another. Satan delights when Cain killed his brother. Satan delights when a child disrespects and disobeys their parents. Satan delights when sons stop going to church with their fathers. Satan delights when daughters fall in love and marry somebody who is outside of the Christian faith. Satan delights when the concept of home and family are shattered. In the opening verses of our gospel reading today, it tells us that Jesus went home. Jesus, being a true man, born of the Virgin Mary, had a home. He had a family. He had returned to see them, but a crowd had gathered around him disrupting his visit to the point where it says that they could not even eat. But in his mercy and compassion, Jesus continues to teach them, to instruct them, and to give them his words, which are the words of eternal life. He tells them who he is, 
the Christ, the Son of the Father. And so the devil delights when Jesus' own family turns against him. His own family rejects his message, and they send for him, saying, He is out of his mind. Indeed, the devil is a strong man, a strong man who seeks to destroy the home and tear apart the family. And even among Jesus' own family, the devil appears to be winning. The devil drives a wedge and tears apart the unity between Jesus and his mother and his brothers. Satan delights in the destruction of Jesus' family. And then, to top it off, the religious leaders turn against Jesus as well. He is driving out demons in the name of Beelzebul, they claim. He comes from Satan himself. And Jesus responds, how can Satan drive out Satan? Satan has turned the religious leaders against Jesus, just as Satan has turned his own family against him, because he delights in destruction and disunity. Satan delights in discord and fighting. Satan delights in the destruction of the home and of the family. I would contend that Satan is having a field day in this nation of ours. In this, the United States of America, we see the destruction of the family and of the home visible at every turn. We have a culture that celebrates rebellion against the values and traditions of parents. A culture that promotes disunity by tearing down the institutions that hold the home and the family together. The assault on our churches and on our preaching is less and less subtle. In this nation of ours, fathers neglect their children. They neglect their responsibility as fathers, abandoning their homes and their children, and leave single mothers to fend for themselves. And Satan delights. In this nation of ours, we promote something called no-fault divorce, where husbands and wives are torn from each other, or they tear themselves from each other, and they break their homes apart. And Satan delights. Women, forced into making decisions about whether to raise children by themselves or to live the life that they desire, are given the legal yet immoral option to abort their babies. And Satan delights. And of course, if you've been downtown Columbus in this month of June, you see the bright colors of the rainbow flags, which is an outright rejection of God, God's concept of family in the Garden of Eden. And we see the sinful pride in man's heart. And of course, the words of Proverbs 16 ring in our ears that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Destruction, fall, breaking up, division, Satan delights. The devil delights in the ways of the wicked because he knows what the Lord knows. He knows that a house divided cannot stand. And so we search. We search looking for a place to call home, looking for a people to call family. A house that is not under the control of the strong man, and a family that is united by law and by blood. And our Lord promises to us a new Eden, a new Jerusalem, a new heaven and a new earth where God and man can walk together once again, where houses are stable and places of comfort and security, where families are composed of fathers and mothers and sisters and brothers, sons and daughters who care for one another and lovingly provide for their neighbor's needs. A place where the strong man, the devil, has no authority. A place where the strong man is bound and powerless. A place where Satan is defeated and despairs.
brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus Christ has come into our world to bind the strong man and to ponder and to plunder what is his. The people of this world, the people born into the sin of Adam and Eve, have been claimed by Christ once again. By his obedience to the law and by his blood, we are the house of the living God. We are the family of God, and we are united by the cross of Christ and our confession of faith in him. We are brought together by the forgiveness of sins and by the communion of the saints, which we will celebrate here today. Indeed, by Christ's glorious death and resurrection, he has bound the strong man, united the church, and given us a home and a family that is truly a gift from God. And so, listen to the words of Christ, and not the words of this world, in which Satan delights. Listen to the message of the cross, and the forgiveness of sins, and not the messages of discord, division, and hatred. Sit at Jesus' feet, and hear his words to us this day, as he looks around and sees this house, and this family, this assembly of believers. And he says, here, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, that is, whoever listens to the word of God and believes it, he is my brother and sister and mother. We are the church. This is God's house. And indeed, by God's grace, we are his family. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.